Hello everybody, welcome to this multiple choice question walkthrough for the amount of substance topic. Do feel free to download the questions from the description, have a go at them, and then watch my video and see how you got on. This question is giving us some percentage by mass data for a compound and we're being asked what the molecular formula could be for this compound and we've got four options. It's sort of making you want to do an empirical formula calculation for each of them, but you don't need to do that. What you need to do is look at the percentages of one of the elements only and see which of these formulae match. I recommend carbon because A, it's a nice number, and B, there's the same number of carbons in each formula. So the two carbons in each of these formulae will have a mass of 24. We need to divide it by the total mass of each formula, so the MR of each formula, multiply it by 100, and that will give us the percentage of carbon in that particular formula. So for A, we do 24 divided by 58 times by 100, and that means we've got 41.3% carbon in A. B is 24 divided by the MR of 42 times 100, which gives us 57.1%. So these two are both wrong. C is 24 divided by 60 times by 100, which is 40% carbon. So C is correct. If you run the same numbers through for D, you get 42.1% carbon. So confirming that C is the correct answer. Here we're being asked about ethanol and we're told that the legal limit for ethanol is 80 milligrams per 100 centimeters cubed of blood and we're being asked what this concentration is in moles per decimeter cubed. So we need to start off with a series of conversions. So we have 80 milligrams in 100 centimeters cubed of blood and so that means it is 0 0.08 grams per 100 centimeters cubed of blood. And then we need to convert this grams per 100 centimetres cubed into grams per 1,000 centimetres cubed. And that is obviously grams per decimetre cubed. And so that's simply multiplying it by 10. So that's 0 0.8 grams per decimetre cubed. And last of all, we're converting grams per decimetre cubed into moles per decimetre cubed by dividing by the MR, which we're given is 46. And that gets us our answer of 1.74 times 10 to the minus 2 for our concentration. This question is asking us about the percentage atom economy for the production of ethanol from glucose as shown in the equation here. Now atom economy is found by working out what the total mass of the target product is and dividing it by the total mass of the reactants that we're using to get them. So ethanol is our target molecule and its MR is 46. But there are two molecules of ethanol in our products and so we need to multiply that 46 by 2. The MR of glucose which is on the left hand side is found by adding up 6 lots of 12, 12 lots of 1 and 6 lots of 16 so that gives us 180 overall and so we need to multiply that by 100 to turn it into a percent so 92 divided by 180 multiplied by 100 gives us 51 0.1% for our final percentage atom economy, so C is the right answer. This question is asking us what minimum volume of a particular concentration of aqueous bromine is needed to react completely with a particular mass of buta-1,3-diene. So first of all, we need to look at what buta-1,3-diene is. It is an alkene, as you'd expect. It's got four carbon atoms in it, but actually it's got two double bonds, hence the word diene as part of its name. And so that means it would look like this. When bromine reacts with an alkene, it's an addition reaction. You need one molecule of bromine for each of the double bonds, as I'm showing here. And so what that means is we need one mole of butadiene for the two moles of Br2. And so our first job is to now work out what the moles of butadiene is that's being used. So we take our 0.02 grams of buta-1,3-diene, divide it by 54, the MR, and we get 0 0.00037 moles of butadiene. We've established it's a 1 to 2 ratio, so that means 0 0.00074 moles of bromine. 
And since moles is conch times volume, then volume will be moles divided by concentration. And so that will give us 0 0.0148 dm cubed. We need the answers to be in cm cubed because all of these are. So we times that by 1000, we get 14.8 cm cubed. So B is the correct answer. For this question, we're told that some potassium chlorate 5 is heated and it produces a particular volume of oxygen gas at a particular temperature and pressure. And we're being shown the equation. It's important to note from the start that it's 2 moles of potassium chlorate 5 to 3 moles of oxygen gas produced. And we're asked to calculate the moles of potassium chlorate that must have decomposed upon heating. So, Firstly, we're going to be using the ideal gas equation, which is PV equals nRT. Now, the ideal gas equation needs the volume to be in cubic metres. So we've got cubic centimetres, so we need to divide by a million for our volume. Temperature is already in Kelvin, so no conversion there. Pressure is in Pascals, so we need to multiply that by 1000 to get Pascals from kilopascals, as they shown here. Then we crunch those numbers into the ideal gas equation because N equals PV over RT. So 110,000 on the top for our Pascals and then 6.72 times 10 to the minus 5 meters cubed. And then 8.31 and 298 on the bottom gives us a moles of gas of 0 0.002985. That is the moles of oxygen gas produced not the moles of potassium chlorate. But you can see that's why we've got this 2.99 times 10 to the minus 3 as an option. But that's the moles of gas that's been produced. The ratio of potassium chlorate to oxygen is 2 to 3. And so we need to divide this moles by 3 and multiply it by 2. And that gives us 1.99 times 10 to the minus 3. So B is the correct answer. This question is asking us what volume of a particular concentration of potassium manganate 7 solution is needed to oxidise a particular number of moles of VO2+. And we're shown the equation. And it's really important to note that the VO2 plus is present in a 5 to 1 ratio with KMnO4. And so we know that we've got 0 0.01 moles of VO2 plus, and so that means the KMnO4 is going to be five times smaller. So we need to divide that moles by five and we get 0 0.002. That's the moles. Now we know the concentration of KMnO4 is 0.02, so volume is moles divided by concentration, which gives us 0 0.1 decimeters cubed. Our volumes are in cm cubed, so we need to multiply this by 1000, and so we get 100 cm cubed as our answer for this question. Here we're being asked about a method for a titration, and we're told that the volume of acid that's been added from the burette is larger than is expected, and we're being asked to select from these four what is a possible reason for this. So A and B are actually both quite similar because they're talking about the conical flask being washed with water before the titration and actually during the titration as well. So since the water is not an acid or a base, neither of these will affect the titration because they won't affect the volume added from the burette. C is talking about the pipette and that's been rinsed only with water. Now, we're not told this, but the base must be in the conical flask, which means the pipette adds the particular volume of base to the conical flask. And so that will have the effect of diluting the base that we add to the conical flask. Therefore, when we do the titration, less of the acid will be needed to neutralize this smaller concentration of the base. And so C will actually result in a smaller than expected burette reading. And so D must be the correct answer, but the reason it's the correct answer is if the burette is rinsed only with water, this will dilute the acid that's in the burette, which means more of this diluted acid will be used and needed to neutralize the base than we would expect. And so therefore, a larger volume will be required. For this question, we're being asked which of the following samples at room temperature and pressure will contain the greatest number of stated particles? 
Now, first of all, we're going to assume that these are all going to behave ideally, which means that one mole of any gas at room temperature and pressure will occupy the same volume. And since we know that moles is proportional to the number of particles, we don't actually need to work out how many particles are present in each situation. We're just going to work out the moles and we're going to use them as proportionate. So first of all, we've got one gram of hydrogen. Since mass equals MR times moles, one gram of hydrogen is going to be one over two moles. Same principle here, one gram of helium, the AR of helium is four, so one gram of helium is a quarter of a mole. And so that means that B is definitely wrong because A, one half, has got a greater number of moles than B. C and D, they actually can't be the right answer because they're both showing the same volume. And we should remember that at room temperature and pressure, one mole of any gas occupies 24 cubic decimeters of volume. And so that means that both C and D will occupy 1 24th of a mole. And that means that they both are really, really small, far smaller than B, so we can rule them out and they couldn't both be the right answer. So that means that A must be the correct answer because it's the largest number of moles, which means it will have the largest number of particles. Here we're being asked to look at a combustion equation for butane and it reacts with oxygen to make carbon dioxide and water and everything is in the gas state. We're told that 20 cm cubed of butane is burning completely in 0.2 dm cubed of oxygen. We're not told whether all of that oxygen is used up. And we're being asked which of these statements is correct. Now to help us answer this question, it's worth looking at what volumes are going to be involved. Now, you should know that since the ideal gas equation says that one mole of any gas occupies the same volume, we can treat the volume ratio as being equivalent to the mole ratio. So from the equation, butane is one, oxygen is six and a half, carbon dioxide is four, and water is five. So that means if we're using up 20 cm cubed of butane, that means we will be using up 130 cubic centimeters of oxygen. So that means that 70 cm cubed is going to be left over. We'll be making 80 cm cubed of carbon dioxide and 100 cm cubed of water. And that's because the volume ratios need to mirror the mole ratios. So A, when it says 40 cm cubed of carbon dioxide is formed, no, it's 80. B, 0 0.065 dm cubed of oxygen is going to react, no, that's 130 centimeters cubed, so 0.13 dm cubed. So B is also wrong. C, 70 cm cubed of oxygen is remaining. Yes, it is. We've used up 130, so there's going to be 70 cm cubed left over. So C is the correct answer, which means D must therefore be wrong. And we know that it is because you make 100 cm cubed of water, which is 0.1 dm cubed. In this question, they're asking us about the percentage yield of aluminium. And we're told that we're producing 20 grams of aluminium from 50 grams of aluminium oxide. So I suggest we take a look here at the mole ratio. This is a reacting mass calculation. So set yourself out these five rows, chemicals, mass, MR, moles, and ratio. The chemicals of interest are aluminium oxide and aluminium. We don't care about the oxygen. So the mass of aluminium oxide being used is 50. Its MR is 102, and so that is 0.49 moles. The ratio from the equation is two aluminium oxide makes four of aluminium, and so our 0.49 moles of aluminium oxide will make 0.98 moles of aluminium. When we multiply that by the relative atomic mass of 27, we get 26.46 grams. So that means that our percentage yield is actual yield, 20 grams divided by what we could have got, our theoretical yield, 26.46, multiplied by 100, so 75.6%, which, given all of these are whole numbers, we need to round that to 76%, and so A is the correct answer. Okay, that's the end of this video. I hope it was useful. I'll see you again soon.